<clears throat> Good morning, afternoon or evening, all you lovely people from all over the world. I've been sitting here watching you chatting and saying hello to each other. I just think it is completely awesome that you are all still here. Welcome to the Photo Creative Plants and Trees Challenge. So, Photo Creative, if you don't know what it is, it's a series of monthly photo challenges designed to help you work out with your photography skills. You need to shoot for the challenge. You're not allowed to upload pictures from your archives. If you would like to join in with these challenges, please click a link in the description area below that will take you through to my website, explains everything you need to know, how you join in, etc. I want to give a big thank you shout out to everyone who makes donations to help keep Photo Creative going. Big shout out to Jane Barnes who has just donated 20 bucks. Thank you Jane, that is really appreciated. We all owe you and everyone who makes these donations a debt of gratitude. You can support these challenges by clicking the little dollar button below this live stream or if you wish you can sign up and make small regular donations on the web page. Again, the link is in the description area down below. So how are you all? How is everybody? Just say hello, just stick in. Are you all well? Are you all happy? It's just great to see you as always. All these regular faces we're seeing and also some new faces, which is completely awesome. <clears throat> we had a fantastic weekend workshop in Switzerland last week. It was absolutely awesome. And I know some of you guys that were on that workshop are right here tonight. And it was just brilliant meeting you in person, some photo creatives as well as others. Uh, we absolutely rocked it. You guys rocked it. It was a superb weekend workshop. <laughs> Hello, Jules Vids. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to use your real name because you obviously, you know, there we go, using your avatar. Absolutely brilliant. We had a fantastic time. If you'd be interested in joining me on a workshop, we've got a brand new one coming up in Morocco which will be at the end of this year. There is again a link in the description area below. Go and check these things out as well as the online courses. Hello Michelle, how are you? Good to see you again, fidgety midget. And remember, we're still not sure what you were doing with that statue. But anyway, enough of that. <clears throat> you guys have come up with some extremely creative ideas, great photography, and I particularly want to applaud photographers who have entered for the first time. It's so good to meet some new faces in the group and also see you getting into action and doing the challenges because you're never gonna get good at something by watching others do it. You've got to get on the pitch, you've got to get on the court. And that's what these challenges are all about, to give you a challenge, something to play with. It's not a competition. This is a gym workout for your creativity and your photography. It's not about who's better than who. This is a challenge and it's a workout. In a moment, we'll begin the critique and start looking at your pictures. And in about an hour, I'll announce my personal favorite images of the week. If you're in the group, um, you may have seen a post I put up on Monday when I was going through these images. I just had this great long list and going, I can't choose between them. This was seriously difficult. Any feedback that I give this evening is of course intended to help the photographer and of course you guys who are listening. If you don't get a shout out, please don't think that reflects upon your work or your images. I can't shout out or talk about every single one, but I do try to choose images which will be beneficial to everyone as a group. So, look at all you lovely people. I will try and keep one eye on the comments. Uh, yeah, all cool. <laughs> Zurich people chatting nicely together. Right, so bear with me one moment while I get my screens sorted out. And let's start having a look at your amazing work. Here we go. I mean, just look at this stuff. There really is some seriously good photography here. Now I'm speaking now to you guys who may be looking at these images and thinking, oh, I'm not good enough, I can't do this. The way you get good enough is by doing it. 
as I said just now, this is not a competition about who's better than who. These are challenges to help you grow your skills, and you've got to do the challenges in order to get better. Um, that's just the way the world works. You can't become a great golfer by watching other people play. You can learn a bit from it, but at some point, you've actually got to pick up a club and swing it at a ball. So please don't feel self-conscious about joining in these challenges. There are some really great images here. There are some images from all levels of photographer, all kinds of skill level. And you guys who are near the beginning of your journey, I really, really salute your courage in jumping in and joining in. Please do that, do that. If, I'm, if you're listening to that, then do that. What have we got? Glenn said, have I got new glasses, Mike? No, actually, I've been wearing them for a while, Glenn, so you haven't been paying attention. These are my in-the-office glasses. These are the expensive ones. I never take them out of the office because I will sit on them, I will break them, and I will lose them. Nice background, you noticed. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, the messy background is now hidden. Uh, I've also moved fairly recently this weekend I moved as you may remember I kind of moved out where I was for a long time I've been in temporary accommodation and I have now moved somewhere else so uh, maybe the next one will be coming from my new office because I'll be moving out of here as well um, as things progress so let's start looking at some pictures shall we I just need to make sure I've got everything in the right place make sure I can see your comments when I'm looking over there, I'm looking at comments and things on the other screen. I think we are good. Yeah. Well, let's just dive on in, shall we? Let's have a look at this one here. Hi, Richard. I get it. Spotted whilst out on a country walk at the weekend. You like the way the surrounding branches frame the area. I get what you're saying. It's this bit here, isn't it? These sort of, this sort of triangle shape. And also this interesting little cross in the middle. I love the bluebells and I like the daffs and I like the trees. I think they're pretty good. My coaching would be, I'm not sure you need that bit at the bottom. If, if everybody just gets their hand and just does a little, just take off those logs at the bottom. I think it will improve the picture just a little bit. It will help your composition because I think these logs down here at the bottom, they're kind of fighting with everything else. I don't think you really need them because there's quite a nice little line of bluebells going on through here. So maybe in a little bit closer, it would just sort of help how it works. Hello, Sharon. Are you Richard? <laughs> Sorry, I'm being facetious. <clears throat> it was the cross that you noticed, Sharon. Interesting. What did everyone else notice first? Let's just throw that one open. Just bang it into the chat. What did you notice first? Because we all notice different things first. Um, Ian prefers it without the logs at the bottom. Log in the front, cross, cross, daffs. Nice one, okay, cross, 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 cross. The cross is coming out on the top. I notice the logs first. Um, but we all notice different things. The other bit of coaching I would give you here, Richard, is I think your exposure could come down just a little bit. It's a little bit overly bright. It's a really tricky thing because I get it. This is a really pleasant, beautiful little bluebell wood. You're having a great time. <clears throat> but capturing it visually, we're losing all those sensations, the smell of the woods, the sound of the birds, the feel of the air on your skin, etc. I think your exposure could have come down at least half a stop, possibly more, and it would have brought those colours in the bluebells and everything out quite a lot. But nonetheless, it's a great shot, and good on you for getting out there, getting on the pitch, shooting some pictures. Because that is the most important place to go. Let's have a look at Kevin's here. We've got some nice textures going on here, Kevin. <clears throat> Again, I'm not sure about the exposure. I think you possibly could have come down a little bit more. I think the thing here is we're not quite sure where to look, or I'm not at least. Um, where should I look in this picture? But you've got some nice textures. Now textures really depend on light, mostly side light. 
And if you can backlight a texture, what do I mean by that in this situation? Well, let's say you were over here on this side where my mouse is wiggling around and the light was coming in from the other side towards you. It would probably make those textures stand out a lot more. Maybe if you moved around the tree trunk a little bit and shot more towards the light, it would make the textures pop just a little bit more. But nonetheless, again, good on you for getting out there and doing it. This is how we get good at stuff. We go and we do it and we do it and we do it and we do it and we just keep doing it. And that is how we grow in our skills. There's a little bit of knowledge that you need in photography. Light, that is the big one. Composition, that's another big one. There's five controls on the camera you need and maybe three or four other features that are useful. Most of the rest of it's guff put there by marketing people. My online masterclass in photography can take you through all that effortlessly and easily if you would like to jump on board and find out a bit more about that. Because until you can control the tools of photography, you can't really do photography. Because if you're thinking, what shutter do I need? What aperture do I need? How do I change this? How do I set that? What settings do I put on the camera? You're not able to concentrate on things like, where is the light coming from? Where do I need to stand? How shall I compose the picture? Lindy, we'll let you off for being late. But great effort. Thank you for entering it. So many pictures that hurt. Now, we had a conversation in Zurich about a joke that was going around in this group. I'm sorry, but in my opinion, for just too long, too long, it kept reappearing. However, that is such a great picture, Joan. I have to just pick it up. Um, you know, it really is. You've got some lovely, lovely light going on here. And that light is just very subtly coming towards the camera. If you look along the top of these branches, you see there's a little bright area and then a dark area. That light coming over the top is just wrapping around the branch and giving it a shape. It's also doing the same to the duck, <coughs> which is just sitting there looking real dopey and sleepy and all the rest of it. But one of the things that works really, really well with this is look how few colors there are. There isn't a riot of different colors going on. Now, I'm not saying a riot of different colors is a bad thing, because some images absolutely work. Think of the Mela Festival in India, where they're all throwing different colored powders over each other, crazy colors. But it also works with this. What do we got? We've basically got tones of black and white and green. There's very little else going on. And the most colorful area of the picture is, of course, your duck. Lovely bit of a reflection, nicely composed, very well executed technically. The duck is nice and sharp, carefully focused, a wide aperture with a longer lens to separate the duck from the background, and you have got a really nice shot. Congratulations. It's a real good one. Where else do we go? It's just, oh, there's so many here. I'm not kidding you. It was agony. I'm going to talk about this one of Helen's for a moment because... We're now going into a very different realm of photography here. Look at the simplicity within this image. Well spotted, Helen. Well spotted. And very, very well executed too. Look at the camera angle. Helen has got down very low. Very low. Um, Oh, I've just seen a comment from Glyn. Glyn, you are, of course, probably the most argumentative person in this group, but you do have a point. <laughs> a duck isn't a tree or a plant, but it was surrounded by them, so I'm just going to let it go. She still didn't get into the points at the end, even though it was a great picture. Um, Helen, back to you. <clears throat> Very well executed. Look at this gorgeous sky, this sort of diagonal line of brightness running through in between those clouds and this sort of interestingly shaped tree. The way it's just sort of come up and hung over back down. It's almost like, I don't know, a bride's veil or long hair flowing down the back. Black and white, I think, totally works for this. It is very dramatic. It does just come together really nicely. Simplicity works. There are times when lots of noise and lots of colour will work too. 
it's finding that balance because there's no rules in photography it's a creative thing and also of course what one person likes another doesn't great shot Helen another one which I really like from uh, this one here Rafael very different take on it cloudy rainy day you know lots of photographers think oh there's no point going out the sun's not shining well here you go we've still got a really nice picture here great picture Rafael I don't know if you're here I'm just intrigued because I'm getting a hint of lens baby about this I could be wrong if you're here I'd love to know did you use a lens baby what do I like about this well there's movement in it there's quite a lot of movement in it you couldn't look at this and say any one part is actually pin sharp does it matter well I don't think so because it's kind of it's kind of giving an, a, a feeling an imprint it really does have the feeling of a cold rainy day the little it's almost like the tree is shivering as well that little human figure down the bottom and I think it's a human figure it could be a fence post I'm not entirely sure but I'm going to take it that it's a little human figure walking through the misty rainy day again very simple we've got greys and greens and a little bit of sort of ochre yellows in the tree hey Raf, good to see you buddy a lady a lady um fantastic <clears throat> but yeah it's a beautiful shot it's really well done it's, it's, it's well executed because you know people say well it's not quite sharp well sometimes things that aren't quite sharp work maybe it's not quite sharp because of moisture on the lens you know the lens may have been a bit steamed up maybe it's a bit of a slow shutter speed either way it doesn't really matter it does work <coughs> excuse me let's just scroll down a little bit further and look at a couple of others somewhere because there are so many cracking pictures in here and I want to try and help others as well along the way this is one I agonized over a bit hello V nice to meet you I don't think we've seen you here before so it's great that you've posted a picture and I love the colors again it's so simple look the earth of the field and the trees very very similar colors we've got a little bit of green then we got that same repeating color against that cloudy blue black sky I love the little row of trees all nicely in a row I really do think it's a great picture my coaching for you Hilary I'm probably saying a name wrong forgive me if I am would be we probably don't need quite so much foreground this area at the bottom where those little birds are I think that is probably a cutoff point just below there so let's just have a little thing get, get your hand out or get an envelope or something I'm going to try it with an envelope and see if it works and just kind of close one eye and just take off maybe two-thirds of this space below those birds sitting on the ground there eating all the farmer's seeds I just think it helps I just think it helps what do you think guys try it <coughs> just take off maybe two-thirds of the bottom and just see what you think just just sort of take it off so it's a little bit below those birds because I can already see a little bit of controversy here Alec loves the trees being in the middle I like them being just slightly down a bit Lost Shepherd says there's too much sky I kind of like the sky this is the really cool thing because there's no right and there's no wrong photography is a creative thing I was at the Exposure International Photography Festival back in um, February <coughs> where I got to meet and hang out with um, Steve McCurry possibly the most famous living photographer on the planet these days and you know it's, it's just really interesting looking at images what people like and what people don't personally I really really like his work there's a quirky sense of humor to it um, which he has himself as a person but I was talking to a colleague of mine about how much his images were selling for at exposure where you can buy them get frame prints and they're beautifully produced my friend sort of said well if he can sell them for that much and I'm not going to tell you how much it was but it was a large sum of money why can't you and it's kind of like there's a backstory and a history to it as well if I go and get a sheep and pickle it in formaldehyde I'd have to pay someone to take it away however if my name was Damien Hurst and I had his backstory I could probably charge a few million pounds for it 
this is all part of it. And this is why what we like and what we don't like is also very fluid. It's a very fluid thing. That was a long thing, wasn't it? I don't know if I should have gone down that path, but I did. And I enjoyed it at least. Forgive me. Swig of water. Hillary, I really like that image. I think it's great. It's a tiny bit soft on my screen now. Does it detract from it? For me, I think it would be better if it was a bit sharper. This could be a Facebook algorithm thing because Facebook can chew pictures to pieces. Nonetheless, I think it's a great image. What else have we got? Let's have a look at this one. I don't know why, just by chance, my mouse is on it. Carolyn, I'm not sure we've met before either. But what a great picture. And it's a different approach to it, isn't it? Shooting at night, doing this in the evening, and there's still just a little bit of that blue in the sky. Look how Carolyn has framed the shot. Photography is about where you stand and when you click, far more than it is about the camera, the kit, the gadget, the whatever it is you use. <clears throat> I have many people come to me on one-on-one -on -one training days and workshops and often say, I've spent all this money on this. Why doesn't it take good pictures? Well, it's because it doesn't take pictures at all. You do. By standing in the right place. I think this is a really interesting image. That moon just sitting cradled beautifully in the, the palms of that tree's hands. Who said that? Who said that? Someone just said, reminds me of Harry Potter. Sharon, I couldn't agree more. <clears throat> it does, I hadn't thought of that. But also look at the softness of the lights on in the house windows, you know, everyone's just kind of, they're all upstairs lights, aren't they? They're off to bed, it's sleepy time. You've got just enough detail in those shadows to really make it look real. I love this little bit of street light kissing the branches down here. How do we know it's street light? It's a yellowy color. So I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's street lights. Also, just lifting the edge of the tree there. Absolutely pin perfect sharp, perfectly exposed for the shot that you're taking. Carolyn, you put a lot of care and work into that. I think it is a really great picture. And I just pull these things apart for you guys a bit because I just want you to think a little bit about the work. It's not just like, oh, that looks nice and click. It's like, where do I need to stand? How do I need to, what do I need to do to make sure the camera is nice and still, to make it sharp, to be whatever we want it to be? <clears throat> Hello, Jan Roberts. Fairly calm day after days of wind. You had wind. I am sorry. Um, surprised there is anything left to photograph. Well, yeah, but you found something. And again, look, light, light is king. Look how Jan has got all these little whiskers on these little little you know bits of stem standing out. It's because the light is coming from behind. It is also the light coming from behind the flower, which is showing all these little veins, the translucency of the petal. These are all the things that work, that, that bring it together and make the flower stand out. My coaching, um, Jan, would be, there's a little bit too much going on behind the flower. That flower against blue, I think, would look great. Now, you have used a wider aperture, um, which has thrown those flowers into, you know, the sorry, the twigs and things behind a little bit softer. Maybe if you could have found an angle where that, particularly that pinky red one behind, wasn't there, I think it would have helped. Maybe just tilted the camera up just a touch so you just had the two white ones and maybe move to the left a bit. I, I wasn't there, I don't know. This is just my coaching, which I think might have improved it a little bit. But you've got your exposure pretty much spot on. You've got some nice colors, and I love the way you have chosen to backlight this and let the light come towards the camera. That is why the things that work in this image work. But I think it would have been better. Composition, just tilt the camera up just a little touch. Where else shall we go? So many, so many, so many. Let's scroll down a bit. I'm sorry if one of your images is being missed. I can't go through all of them. And boy, did you excel yourselves this time. I think this is really interesting, Anton. <clears throat> I like the way you've done the framing here. The statue on the plinth. 
I love the position as well and the way you've just found a little gap through the plants and used the plants to frame that human figure. As human beings we are, draw we are drawn to human figures. Something in our ancestral past makes us recognized human figures. We look to see what is going on, where is the threat coming from, who's coming from the next valley to steal our, our pigs and our sheep and our food and raid the village, etc. And that is why we see faces in pieces of toast and clouds and stuff like that. Very deeply psychological, but your framing is beautiful. Your composition is spot on. This sort of composition works. What Anton has done here is use something to frame something we immediately look at, a human figure. And that is why we go bang straight into it. I have a feeling you could have possibly come in a little closer, maybe made your lens a little bit longer and lost just a little bit of the plants because they'd have still been there and then Glenn wouldn't be able to complain that there wasn't enough plant in the picture. But yeah, just kind of cut it in a bit. I'd, I'd just take a little bit off the sides. Try it, try it. Let's get our hands. Let's just crop the sides just a touch. I think losing just a bit off either side makes it a bit stronger. So, it's a good shot. It's a good composition. It's well executed and I think the black and white works really, really well. Oh, Beverly. You've been here for a long time. You are one of our hardcore originals. Again, it's a really nice shot and the light is, in this case, <clears throat> coming from slightly in front of the camera but above and to the side. That's why we got this little shadow here. But again, it's simple. The flower behind is very soft. The background has got this wonderful softness to it. Bokeh, I believe, is still the buzzword. But it is a very gorgeous picture, Beverly. And, you know, we've seen you do these sorts of things before. You are good at this sort of stuff. I like the space you've allowed in the composition. It's very easy to get carried away and go, let's fill the frame completely with flower. Um, but it works to give things a little bit of breathing space. You know, just give it a little bit of space. Let it breathe, let it breathe, because actually I think it helps to emphasize the plant. Long time ago, I went to see River Dance at um, the Bournemouth International Center. And what completely blew me away was the way they used the space on the stage, the way they'd have a line of dancers here and something else here and a gap and a space between things. And it just looked phenomenal. And it was probably the first time I became aware of using empty space and just putting little bits and pieces in it. Look for that in your compositions because it will help. Great shot, Beverly. Look at that, look. we haven't even moved an inch and it's almost half an hour in. Let's go a little bit further. Another one of our regulars I do just want to throw a shout out to, and that's George. Because you always come up with a quirky different idea. You're good at quirky, George. I think we all know that. But, you know, plants and trees. The willow pond. And it's a good shot too. It's a nice shot, you know, the pub on the corner. I think the way you've gone for the black and white, slightly sepia -y look and the you know, the, the light vignette, it kind of works. It kind of works. I kind of would like to see more of what's down the street in, in the composition. That would be my coaching there, George. But nonetheless, what I do like is your thinking. I like the way you've just kind of put a different twist on it, as you very often do. A different twist can always help, people. A different twist can always help. Made you smile, Dina. Yeah, and if someone can make you smile, you often remember them. What a lovely, soft, gentle image this is. When I say soft, I mean soft as in it's out of focus. Look at it. There's no punchy contrast here. It can be really tempting to make our pictures very, very punchy. You don't necessarily need to. This works so beautifully. And it is again so simple. And again, look at the light. Nice work, Darren. Look at the light. Again, look, we've got all these little whiskers and that beautiful little silver halo going on around these flowers. And that is because the light is coming from in front of the camera back towards it. I bang on about this a lot. I know light is king. And if you shoot against the light, it often works. Also love this, you know, slight pinkiness here in this soft area. But also I love the way you've treated it and kept it gentle 
kept it soft. I haven't tried to pimp the contrast to go mad trying to lift the colours up because it doesn't need it. Uh, I think your composition is bold. Just having this sticking up in the middle, great. The rules say, and so do the keyboard warriors, oh, you mustn't put things in the middle. If it looks great, put it anywhere you like, because that's what composition is. Just finding the angle, finding the place. What looks great? Great shot, Darren. Let's scroll on down a bit. Matthew Parsons. I'm sorry, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Glenn's side a bit. You're getting a lot of attention from like Glenn. I don't like this. Um, plants and trees. This is far more horse and tree or pony and tree. Now I'm not saying it's bad, and I get the thing, I get where you're going, you know, yep, <clears throat> your favourite tree to run up against. It's a nice picture of a pony, the ears of Ford and all the rest of it. Um, but it's not quite coming together too well with the theme. I like the tree part, I must admit, it's a dead tree and it's gnarly and I like the shapes. Um, what can I say? You've actually got backlight going on in this again too. Look, look at this highlight up horse's face, the ears, down the mane, over the back. These are things which are all helping. There's a little bit of a highlight here in the log. But um, <laughs> I don't mind, Matthew. You said you'll try better this time. What I'm saying is I totally salute you for getting out there and doing it and doing some photography. So good on you, buddy. Good on you. Please don't think I am knocking you in any way. I'm not. How could this shot work better? As a shot, as it stands, I think possibly if you could have had a little bit of connection with the pony. If you could have, something works well with ponies and animals, dogs, cats, and all the rest of it. Make a little noise. I'm like, I like making animal noises. It's just a pastime and a hobby I've had for a long time. But make a little noise. Click your, click your fingers. Stuff like that. Click with your mouth. Make pony noises. <laughs> make, make a dog noise. Bark at it. If you can get the horse to turn around and look at you, just in that moment of look, often the ears will be forward. You've got a connection. And it will help make your pitch pop. If a pub can be a tree, why can't a tree be a tree? <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> <coughs> right, okay, I've got to stop reading the comments. What else have we got here? Laura Lynn McLean. Another very different kind of look at it. Look at all these different interpretations of plant and tree, but it's another very beautiful picture. These little droplets of water. Look how they're picking up the little highlights of the light. It just looks fantastic. The little curves and the colours, very, very simple again, all one colour. Even though we can't see the whole flower, we know that it's a flower. I've only just read that it's a tulip. I'm a bloke. I understand motorbikes and things. Not good with plants. But <clears throat> it's a tulip and it's just a beautiful shape. And these little droplets, these little catch lights in each little droplet it's just a really nicely executed image Laura um, what can I say very soft gentle light again I'm guessing but sometimes with a shot like this the camera will try and make it a bit too bright because there's a lot of darkness going on around some areas you've got to watch your exposure be careful with your exposure <clears throat> because I think if this was any brighter I'm not so sure it would have worked so well nice work Laura I have to scroll down, no matter how much I don't want to. I've got to talk about Damien. <laughs> he could be here all night. Great shot. Again, a very graphic angle on this. Um, look at that lovely, lovely, curly little fern shape. I'm never quite sure of the difference between a fern and a bracken. And I know someone's going to tell me, but I'm not going to take any notice. I'm sorry. But look at all these details. A lovely soft background. I'm guessing, Damon, you shot this with a macro lens. Um, because we've got a very, very shallow depth of field and these things are really pretty small. But look at all these details in these little whiskers. It is, again, very, very soft, sort of gentle light. If that was in strong sunlight. Hey, Damon, good to see you, buddy. <clears throat> if it was strong, strong sunlight, I don't think it would have worked anything like so well. We've got a beautiful shape, and again, it's a bold composition. Look at this swoop coming in and around like that. Uh, nice use of the space. Well-composed image. 
and well executed of course technically it's perfect the place we want to look is pin sharp the exposure is spot on for the subject depth of field is very shallow it concentrates us on the subject but if you're shooting with a macro lens you get a very shallow depth of field anyway because the closer you get to your subject the shallower your depth of field becomes depth of shield, depth of field is a moving block of sharpness as you move further away from the subject the depth of field gets bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually it reaches a place where you cannot blur the background and the closer you get to your subject the tinier and tinier that depth of field becomes aperture is not the only thing in charge of depth of field gosh there's some great pictures here cornell another very bold picture so many of you were in my folder to choose from but hey I love this splash of, of sunshine, of light. I love the way it's sort of shattering and sort of, you know, bursting around. The way the light is coming through and showing these little veins, it's just kissing around the edges. And again, look, we've got this little rim light. We can even see some little cobwebs, very, very soft, gentle background. It's a kind of dark and moody look. Again, I really, I really like your, um, your use of space to include, I'm guessing it's the sun, it, it may not be, it may be an artificial thing, but nonetheless, um, totally agree, Atta, it is a lovely, lovely picture. It's just dark, it's just calm, beautifully executed. Well done, Cornell. I have to move on just a little tiny bit here. <clears throat> Let's have a look at, hello Dan, another long time person. I kind of like the way you have got the trees and the clouds. You've almost got a sort of mirrored shape going on here. I think this is just my coaching to you, Dan. Maybe give those trees a little bit more breathing space. Maybe include a bit more sky. Let's see a bit more of that cloud. Now, I don't know if you're here, Dan, you often are. It'd be good to know. Did you spot this, this sort of mirrored shape, the tree sticking up and the cloud sticking up? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Um, however, I'm just watching the comments in case you're there. Um, <clears throat> however, we can see that there are blue holes in the sky. Those of you who've done my seven building blocks of photography course know what I'm talking about. Blue holes in the sky. Blue holes mean shafts of light. And I think maybe if you've got a bit of light just hitting and picking out these trees a bit more, maybe just give them a little bit more space. Come back, give them a bit more space. Maybe even let that cloud move over to the other side so you could kind of have trees and cloud. I don't know if you can see me yet. Trees, cloud, more that sort of thing going on. Um, I don't know. It's just my coaching on it. Nice idea, though. Haven't seen you there, Dan, so I'm guessing you're not with us this evening. But thanks again for entering. Oh, boy, there's so many pictures here. Look at them all. Just look at them all. Roger Chesel, look at that lovely pic. I'm just going to quickly pick it out again. Look at this. It's nice and it's dark and it's moody. Using light and shade. Very, very close in. Beautifully executed picture. Now, again, if you're one of those people who's talking to at the beginning of this about... You know, you might be thinking, I don't want to enter a photo challenge because I'm not good enough. The way Dan and these guys got as good as they are is because they did keep doing it. Hey, Dan, good to see you, buddy. Um, it's because these guys did get in and they have done the challenges. We've been running these challenges for over two years now. Something that started off as a, a few weeks when people first got locked into their homes to stop them going nuts has been going on for ages. And over that time, so many people in this group of now over 4,000 photographers have continuously stretched themselves and pushed themselves. And it's one of the most rewarding things I've done to see you guys from when we began to where you are now. It's just fantastic. And it's you guys who keep doing the challenges. Um, you know, not just mine, others. Set your own challenges as well. I'm setting them for you because it just gives you something a bit left field from someone else. Let's just move on some more. I have to just move on some more. I just have to. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Who's this? Up a bit. Eileen. 
Eileen Imla. Hello, Eileen, and welcome. I think you're a new face. Thank you for coming. Thank you for entering and joining in, getting out there on the court and doing it. You have got some great stuff going on here because red and green, they're best mates. They are complementary colours. They're at opposite sides of the colour spectrum. And so they do work very, very well together. I like the way you have chosen this very simple red and green thing. Love the fact that there are those droplets of water on there, Eileen. However, it's not quite as lively as it could be, is it? If you're here, I'd love to hear from you. Um, <clears throat> The droplets of water are there, but somehow they're not quite popping and sparkling like some of the others we've seen. That's a light thing. Now, you may not be able to do anything about this. Um, you may not be able to control that light. It may have been a completely flat grey day. You haven't got a chance in hell of getting little sparkles come into those droplets of water. Um, there are things you can do. Um, there are things. Uh, Katie, I've just seen your message. You've got my attention all on your own. Look at that. Ping an email to Emma. Go to the website, ping an email to Emma or message through the group to Emma. I don't know why your submission isn't there. I'm sorry, Katie. I can't answer that one. No idea. Ask the wonderful Emmeline Churcher if she can have a little look. Maybe she, she can help you get to the bottom of that. Right. Back to Eileen. Yeah. If there was a little bit of sunlight, Something like that. We've looked at backlight, haven't we? A bit of light coming from behind, it would help it pop. Now in this situation, you may not be able to do much about it, but maybe in another situation, another day, you'll kind of know what to do. And that's the only reason I'm telling you. The other thing to watch out for, you see this other little stalk of plant here. It's kind of like it's barging into the edge of the picture. It's going, look at me, look at me, look at me. I want to be in the bits too. Look at me, look at me. It's kind of photobombing. The, the, the tulip and I kind of wonder could you have just moved slightly around one side just a bit and then lost that one or of course just cheated you know pop your hand in there and just like push it out of the way a bit rip it out the ground <laughs> I'm joking but yeah just kind of push it out of the way a bit maybe find a slightly different angle but well done Eileen I love the fact you have found some complementary colours. Like, oh, Lord, who did that? Emily Jones. <sighs> what do I say? You lot keep bringing in things like this. Look how simple this is. Emily, I love this picture. Look how simple it is. There is nothing complicated about this picture, but look how eye-catching it is. Just by getting into a really different point of view, if you're here, Emily, I'd love to hear from you because I'm guessing you took that with a phone. Um, I'm only guessing because it's not easy to get a camera underneath a daisy. They're only little tiddly ass things, aren't they? If you shot that with a phone, great. No problem with that. Don't let people tell you that, that phones and, uh, are not real cameras. They bloody well are. Photojournal, photojournalist, colleague, friend of mine, shares a very similar name, Michael Christopher Brown. He uh, produced a couple of books. They're wonderful books. They're pretty harrowing books because they are about a war. Nonetheless, he shot them on an old iPhone. I think he said it was an iPhone 6 or 7 because in the situation he was in, you don't want to be waving a DSLR around because you're likely to get your head cut off. Uh, but of course, people ignore phones, don't they? People go like that with phones. Nothing wrong with using your phone because it allows you to do things like this, to get that in down below, underneath. Really creative picture, Emily. I love it. I guess you're not here because I haven't seen anything in the chat. But for everyone else, think about it. Think outside the box. When you look at some daisies, think, how could I look at those in a different way? Hmm, photograph them from underneath. Okay, how in hell am I going to get this underneath some daisies. The daisy's only that high. Okay, you're not. However, you do know that you all have a camera in your pocket that is really, really skinny. It's called one of these things. Use that, photography comes from you, not your camera. Great shot, Emily. Nicely done. Right, I am gonna whiz on down a bit. I am really sorry if I'm skipping your pictures because I wanna talk about so many of them but I have to move on. 
let's just look at them and appreciate them just a bit as we move. Um, here's one I wanted to shout out. It's one of our regulars, of course. It's Nan. <clears throat> what a great idea. Nan, you were in and out of my folder continuously, but in the end, I just had to. Um, look at these little droplets of water. The daisy behind. Very creative idea, Nan. Um, really nicely done. So how was it done? Uh, Nan, you can tell us if you like, but I think I'll jump in anyway. I'm going to guess, because <clears throat> I wasn't there. However, it's a really great and simple technique you could do at home. Sheet of glass. Pop the daisy underneath the glass. Uh, one of those little squirty misters, yeah? You get a few droplets of water on that sheet of glass, and then those droplets of water will then pick up and do this marvellous refraction, refraction sort of shape of the daisy underneath. I'm guessing, but I think that's the way you did it. Um, if you're there, Nan, just say yes or no, Brown, you're an idiot. <laughs> I'll accept either. But it's a great shot. How creative is that? How creative is that? Very, very planty, lovely, simple colours. Great shot. Gelatin and water. Yeah, Rob, you're right. Yeah, it can be done that way. You did this for the clock one, Jane. Yeah, cool. Great shot. <clears throat> Oh boy, this is just so much. I'm gonna have a quick look here. I don't know who that is. Anne Franks, hello Anne. Again, look, what a great picture. And I think Anne, I think you're new here too, which is awesome. I don't, forgive me if we have met before. There's now, the group has got so, so large. And I just love the fact you're all here. But again, very simple. The light is coming through. Look at this sort of light refracting down here. And I really think it adds to it. It's a little bit of lens flare. Don't be afraid of lens flare. Lens flare can really, really help. It adds mood and feeling to things. This very, very simple little whiskery piece of grass. And I love those little filaments of cobweb on there. Simple colors, a dark background and green. The backlight bringing out the seed heads. My coaching for you, Anne, would be try and get that exposure down a bit. This is just a little bit overexposed and it's a shame because it's sapping some of the colors and the life out of it. Um, it's a difficult thing to remember. I know there's all these layers that you sort of have to stack up one behind the other. But here's what happened. Your camera is looking at that background and it's seeing all that dark area behind and that's absolutely right to put it there because it will make that seed head pop. However, cameras don't know how much light is landing on the subject. They only know that the manufacturers have told the camera the world is grey, halfway between black and white. And it's an ingenious system because the camera can't know how much is landing on something. It can only tell how much light is reflected by it. But the problem with that is when you have a very, very dark area occupying a large space in your image, the camera doesn't know it's meant to be that dark and it will try and make it gray, it will brighten it up, and that has then had an impact on everything else. <clears throat> and so it has kind of overexposed the whole picture. Never be afraid to argue with your light meter. There is a whole lesson in my masterclass, uh, my masterclass in photography online course about arguing with your camera because your light meter isn't the be all and end all of it. It's a great starting place. But if you're shooting in manual mode and just doing what the light meter tells you, it's the same as being in full auto. It's just that the camera is making you twiddle the knobs and dials instead of doing it for you. You need to use this thing and think what you want to do. <clears throat> Thank you, Laden. Just said uh, that's what the seven building blocks of photography are for and it's really worth it. Thank you. Anyway, great shot, Anne. I really like it. Hope that little tip, that idea helped. So many great pictures. Now, I'm only gonna do this, Brett, because it's down the road from me, isn't it? You've probably seen lots of pictures that I've taken down there. <clears throat> Lovely sunset, very popular spot for sunsets, this is. See photographers down there almost every evening. It is a beautiful, colorful thing. 
It looks a little bit over colorful, if you don't mind me saying so, Brett. It's almost like it's just a touch too much color going on in there. Did you pump it a little bit? Very tempting to do that. But that said, I have been and photographed some sunsets and ended up taking some color out of it because I thought, it just doesn't look right. But, uh, but it was, and that's what it was. <clears throat> It's a great location. You've got your exposure absolutely bang on for this. It's a very difficult thing to do, isn't it? I might have been tempted personally to increase the exposure a bit and let some of this bright area here where the sun is just burn out a bit because it does to your eye naturally. Don't worry about the odd burnt out highlight. However, if you were going more for the silhouette look, you have achieved that perfectly. <clears throat> There's nothing more you know, to add to that. Something to watch for for sunsets is trying to get out there when there's some cloud in the sky too. And I know it's not always possible. This is a great spot. Lots of people I know drive past there on the way home from work at this time of year and go, wow, look at the sunset. And they stop and go and shoot pictures. And why not? <clears throat> the hardcore landscape photographer always likes to have something in the sky. Just suggesting it, Brett, in case you get the opportunity to go back there. Look at the weather, you think, mm, yeah, there's a few clouds in the sky, but there's a gap above the horizon, we might get a really cool one. But thanks for entering. Thanks for being there. And good on you for getting out there and shooting some pictures yourself. Oh, boy, where do we go now? Where, where, where do we go now? Whose is that beautiful bluebell wood? Lindy. See all these little patches of light? Light is what makes and breaks a picture. The way we've got these little patches of light in the bluebells, I actually think bluebell woods are pretty difficult to photograph because it's often a bit of a mess of trees and plants and it's like, where do I look and how do we make something stand out? And I think you've done this really, really well, Lindy. <clears throat> the sun is quite low in the sky. How do we know that? Look at the light on the trees, you see? It's all down one side, it's all down one side. But it's these pools of light that are giving us something to look at. Look, they're meandering us up and around the image and sort of we're going around the corner and up the hill and down the bottom. We're following this path of blue in the bluebell woods. Beautiful things. Um, if you don't live in this part of the world, you, you don't get bluebell woods. It's a shame because they are lovely, though I'm sure you have other things. But it's light and shade. Lindy has done a great job here. <clears throat> with exposure as well. Remember we were looking at, at that lovely piece of grass of Carol's. That piece of grass, the camera saw the darkness and it overexposed the picture. If you're here, Lindy, I'd love to know. I'm guessing with a scene like this, the camera would see all those dark shadows and it will try and make the whole thing brighter. That would make these little pools of light too bright, which suggests to me that Lindy has looked at the scene, known the camera will do that, and then purposely argued with the light meter and toned that exposure down a bit. I'd stay away from the term underexposed the shot because she hasn't underexposed it. She's captured it perfectly, but it is less than the camera may have said it wanted to do. Hey, Lindy, yes, absolutely. You reduced the exposure to get the look that you wanted. This is the thing, cameras don't take pictures, you do. Great work, Lindy, lovely shot. Where should we go? Let's just wander down through here, just look at a couple more pictures and then I will go to the ones that I picked as faves. I think there's a lovely, who did that? Wendy Lamb. Hello, Wendy Lamb. <coughs> How are you doing? Oh, Wendy was on the workshop down at Mutterford. How long ago was that, Wendy? Not long ago. But this is a great bit of panning. Wonderful bit of tree panning, not as in trepanning, but tree panning. Um, I really do think that's a cracking bit of panning because to, to keep the lines absolutely straight, it takes a bit of doing and also finding the exposure, which will adjust the right amount of density um, to you know the movement. If you're not sure how Wendy did this, <clears throat> it is about setting a slightly slower exposure. And then during that exposure, either moving the either opening the shutter and moving the camera up or starting with the camera up and moving it down. Probably not a lot of movement. Which way did you go, Wendy? Did you move the camera up a bit or down a bit? Interesting to know. 
but it's a very creative shot and it's very well executed because it's easy to get a little bit of side to side movement in it and that sort of doesn't help with these, these verticals. But the other thing here is Wendy has shot this in some really nice light. You see these highlights coming down the side here. There's some nice side light going on and it's really helping with those trees. A lot of attempts. <coughs> yeah, absolutely, Wendy, you do. You often have to do loads to get it looking the way you want it. And so Wendy has just said she was click moving the camera up as she did the exposure. Um, slowish exposure, I don't know, I'm going to guess, about an eighth of a second, something like that, I don't know. My coaching, Wendy, may be, I don't often crop things, but I might just take a little bit off the bottom. That's all. I just take a little bit off the bottom because the trees are the exciting bit. Not much, just a little bit because it needs that ground to anchor it. But great shot. Good one. Where else should we go? Oh, so many. I want to have a look at this one. Anmol. Hey there. Thank you for being here. I don't think we've met. I think you're another new face and that's just awesome. <clears throat> but I think this is a great picture. I think this is a great bit of sunset. I'd love to know. Where are we? Okay, hills around Missouri and northern India. Wow. I want to go there. I want to go there. The way the light is just playing over these flowers again, look, you see, there is the darkness, there's, there's the light in the sky, it's just gently, gently putting little highlights around these plants. Um, Anmol has also, I would guess, possibly pulled the shot down a little darker than the camera wanted to make it to make those plants not quite silhouettes. And I think that is, a, is, is what's giving it a nice touch. Plus, of course, this beautiful misty mountain going on. Very well executed photograph, Anmol. Thank you for entering it. And good on you for getting out there and doing the bizzo. What's the time? It is five minutes to eight. So we probably ought to switch over. And if your image hasn't been shouted out, then I apologize, I can't talk about all of them. I did have a little scan through before we started, plus of course I spent most of Monday looking at your image. Oh, look at these, they're just so beautiful. I'm not gonna be tempted, I'm not gonna be tempted. But I hope the feedback and critique that has been given so far has been of value and useful to everyone particularly you guys who are thinking, oh, I don't really understand where to go. I hope it's been useful to you because that is what this is all about and what it is designed for. So bear with me just one moment whilst I sort out my screen. So that, I want that one. What do I want? <laughs> I don't know what I want. Right, let's do that. Now I can move that over there and I can move that over there out the way. And I think we're ready to rock and roll because I don't want to give you lovely folks a little sneaky preview <clears throat> of what is to come. So these following images, they're just the ones that I like the best. They're just the ones that, that drew my attention and I kept coming back to. This doesn't mean they're better than anyone else's. It just means that I liked them more. They drew me back. This is one of the things with photography. Of course, you can't please all the people all the time. And I'm not saying I'm not pleased with anyone else's images. It is simply a question of what you like. And that is all there is. The only person you must please in your photography is you. Because that is your style. What you photograph and you like to photograph and the way you like to photograph it that is your style. The people over here will love it and the people over here may not. Doesn't matter. Okay, so let's rock and roll. Let's have a look at some of the pictures that I couldn't help but ping up, pick up on. And of course, it's hard for me to read these, but I, this one I really liked. So Jido Khan. I know it's a busy image, but I cannot 
help but just be drawn back to it again and again and again. Yes, I love the mountains, but I think the thing that really got me interested was this, is the way we got these beautiful blossoms everywhere and those vertical lines and then those two coming in from the side, the horizontals, just kind of disrupting the symmetry a bit. The mountains are a nice background, but it's the trees and the blossoms that work. And, and I just, I like it with them coming in from the side. Now, interesting, I'd just like to throw this one out here because some people will disagree. Who would prefer this shot with the verticals without those coming in from the side? Just go V if you just want the verticals. Just stick a V in the chat if you're someone who just wants to see the verticals and you find those coming in from the side annoying. Because I know some of you will. Um, but it's just interesting to see. I like how the branch going horizontally links up with a mountain. Yeah, I, I do too, Emma. But, you know, not everybody will. And you know what? That is okay. Because actually it would work either way. But nonetheless, Sajid, I think it's a really beautiful photograph. And another thing with this as well, have a go at this yourself. Go find it in the PLD album. Put it up full screen and then go stand on the other side of the room. Because this is one of those images that when you're close to it, kind of like we are now maybe just sitting in front of the screen, it is a touch busy. But if you go stand back a bit, and you've got it filling your monitor, so your viewing distance changes. Suddenly, this, to me, belongs on a wall. It's something which is really enjoyable to look at. Play around with viewing distances too, because, you know, these are all different things that are all part of it. Congratulations, Sajid. I really loved your picture. <clears throat> Next one that I got overexcited about and kept coming back to is this one from Alan Baxter. Um, again, it's light. I just think you've got some beautiful light going on there, Alan. I think you were just in the right place at the right time. I don't know, how long did you wait? How long did you watch to find out, to see if that light was going to work for you? Um, but it's side lit, late or early in the day how the light is washing across the ground and it's pretty much coming all from one side. The other thing with this light is, look, it's all coming from the right of the frame and the tree is curling to the left. It's almost like the light itself is blowing the tree in a breeze a little bit. Um, okay, I'm going off on a slightly crazy flight of fantasy there. But nonetheless, You've also got this pool of light against the dark background and that is helping our tree really pop and stand out against that background. Um, hey Alan, good to see you. The tree is just behind my back fence. I watched the sun going down and pounced. Good on you, buddy. <clears throat> but this is all part of it. Watching the sun go down and, and then going, oh, look, that works. So, you know, Alan, what Alan is saying is here is he was led not by the tree, but by the light. So if that's in Alan's backyard, think how many times Alan has seen it, or just behind his backyard. Think how many times Alan has seen that tree. But he's chosen to photograph it when the light's right, because light is king. Light is the most important thing that will make your pictures absolutely pop. It will make or break. Beautiful shot, Alan. Thank you for joining in and for inspiring us, all of you, for inspiring us. What have we got here? Our next shot. I really, really love this. I love all of them. I love all of you. I think this is another very pastel, gentle, lovely shot by Liz Worth. Um, I think it's a great image. Again, it's simple. It's gentle. Kind of like the soft pastel feel to it. It's not got too much pump into the colours. The way it just kind of makes it just sit there gently. But look at that little highlight on that flower bud and look at the textures on that bowed leaf that back of the leaf the way it's just curling over the light is again just coming from slightly in front of the camera this front lighting is such a good thing because the light is just washing across the leaf and it's bringing all the veins and textures it's just putting that little highlight but look how the background is all nice and soft 
but it's also the whole picture is made up of about what two or three colors and different tones and shades of it great shot Liz thank you for doing it well done on you for getting out there and entering and doing what you can because that's what it's all about now my next image that I kept coming back to could be just a little bit contentious but you know what do we do you just got to be authentic and honest and I just thought this was a very different take and a very different image um, and I just really like it Marika I just really really like the juxtaposition of the man-made and the plant and yet they are all in exactly the same kind of place they're all in the same state of disrepair if you like but again look at the colors the whole picture is almost made up of about what two colors there's a little bit of green a little bit of yellow and everything else is basically shades of brown personally i really really liked it I love the way you frame this, Marika, with the, the two uprights and then the slightly wilty, like, it's about to fall over flower. Um, I think it's a really strong image. Personally, I really like it. George, yeah, interesting. You said Chern Chernobyl Garden. The phrase Chernobyl came up when I was looking at these with my friend uh, Louise, who owns this office, uh, who works in this office, runs a business in this office. So what do you think of this? And, you know... And I think the phrase Chernobyl came up there as well. But I think it's a well-spotted and well-executed image, shallow depth of field, so that we know what we're looking at. A brave composition using those two verticals and allowing that flower in the middle just to sort of wilt over and sit in the middle. Um, it's almost like it's looking at us. It's almost like it wants a hug. Evelyn, I totally agree. Unconventional, but super. I think I couldn't put it better. So I'm going to shut up. Well done, Marika. <laughs> now we're going into some beauty. From one of our long-time regulars from Jane Kilbride. <clears throat> I just think you've got some beautiful light and some beautiful shapes going on here. Um, you know, yeah, you've been around this group right from day one, Jane. In fact, I think you may even have been, you know, the winner of the first ever PLD, I'm not sure. I just remember though, the flower and the kitchen shot. It was Heart of the Home, I think Estra Suarez, the photojournalist came up with it as a theme. But you've been around this a long time, you're good at this. And I just like the use of the space. Again, look at this simplicity. The light on these little flower heads, absolutely beautiful. The shapes, the beautiful curved shapes. And the way one is just coming in from the side, the soft gray blurred background, the dark areas in the background. And again, look at the light. It's coming very slightly from above and behind and it's wrapping around those flowers. I don't know what they are. Tell me if you're here, Jane, please tell me. <clears throat> there you are, you're Jane Mouse over there. <laughs> I can't keep up with everyone having different names. <laughs> uh, poor old bugger, look at me, I've got gray hair, wrinkles, everything. Um, yeah, I think it is a minimalism. All hell minimalism. Another one, Evelyn, yeah. Um, yeah, beautiful shot. So when you're looking at pictures, if you're thinking, how do I do a shot like that? One of the key things is to slow down a bit. Think through the shot you want to take. Everybody we've looked at who's produced, you know, some really quite striking work. Everything, all the striking work we've looked at tonight, that's the way to say it. The photographer has sort of thought about it. You know, our wonderful tree. Oh, the tree's been there for years, but look at the light on the tree. That's the thought about it. Um, you know, go back through these and just think, how is this created? Great job, Jane. You're very creative with this sort of thing. There's a few of you in this group um, are, and I am really proud to be part of it. So, my choice, my picture of the month, the one that I just kept coming back to was this one. Hang on, I'm just gonna make sure I've got everything in the right. Yep, I have. <clears throat> I just love this one. Verogo. Vogo. Hang on. I need to check. Vero Moga. 
Veramoga, I'm not sure. I think you're a new phase fair, or you've been sitting in the background hiding. I don't know. But I just really love this. Again, it's a different point of view. We've got some very strong backlight going on here. Remember that wonderful picture of the moon and the houses? Forgive me, I don't remember who um, it was. But again, look at the positioning of the sun. Vero has taken a little bit of care. If you're here, Vero, give us a wave, something like that. Vero has taken a lot of care to be in the right place, to move the body and the camera back and forth, to position that sun perfectly between the tulips. This is what makes the picture work. It would probably work if the sun was behind the tulip, but, you know, that's just a creative choice for the photographer. <clears throat> Again, the light coming from behind. Look how it's bringing the leaves to light. This is quite a tricky exposure to get it so that things don't go into full silhouette. It often involves arguing with the camera. Maybe you shot this as a raw Vero, I don't know, and did a bit of post-production to bring highlights down a bit and shadows up. To me, it doesn't matter. It looks completely natural. It doesn't look as though it's been fiddled or photoshopped with. And again, it's a different angle. It's what makes things just a little bit different. It's getting down low, just like that wonderful shot underneath the daisies. So here we go. We reach the end of this particular photo creative live session. And as always, it's been a complete pleasure and a joy speaking to you guys. Thank you for being there. Thank you for supporting the group. And thank you for doing the challenges. The next challenge will be going live on the website very, very soon. Once we have come off this, it just give me a little moment or two to do that. You should get an email very soon. Uh, those of you who are signed up onto the Photo Creative newsletter. If you're not signed up onto the newsletter, please use the link below, go to the Photo Creative page and pop your email address in there. Because every week I do see things on the page going, how do I enter the challenge? What is the next challenge? What's the date for the next challenge? If you just go to that page, it is always on that page and you will always know and you'll never miss a challenge. One last thing, just please remember guys, shoot for the challenge. This isn't about going to the archive and finding something that might fit the theme. This is the, this is the workout. This is to get you into the photography gym, working out, strengthen those muscles. It's been wonderful talking to you. I wish we were on a stage and interacting live so you could throw comments at me rather than just chat them. Um, it's been a pleasure and a delight. Thank you everyone who supports the group, uh, both by joining in, by sharing the group, and of course, financially. You guys completely rock. I look forward to seeing you in the next Photo Creative Live. Be well, take care, have a great month. I will try and get into the group on Facebook and chat to you as much as I can though. I know, it's a bit rare. We've got, by the way, we've got a video, another video coming out from Ukraine very soon because uh, it was a nightmare to film, but there is a little side thing of something we did in Ukraine coming up. Some very inspiring people. Be well, take care. Love you guys. See you soon.